نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر العمور محتثاتها وكل محتث بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah We praise Him, we seek His help and we ask for His forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our evil actions whomsoever Allah guides there is none to misguide and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray there is none to guide and I testify that Allah alone is worthy of being worshipped and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger after that the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the worst of all the affairs are the matters that are newly introduced into the religion and every newly introduced matter into the religion of Islam is a bid'ah, an innovation all of the innovations are misguidance all the misguidance is going astray and all the going astray is in the fire my brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The topic of today's discussion or talk is pray before you are prayed upon and mashallah what a beautiful title for a very important subject and the first thing we want to do is to remind all of the brothers and sisters of the reality of the nature of this life that if we are Muslim then inshallah all of us will reach that time when we will be prayed upon when our body will be laid out wrapped in a shroud and that the funeral prayer will be performed not by us but for us death is inevitable death is something that nobody is going to escape from it doesn't matter who you are how powerful how rich it doesn't matter what nation or what tribe or what is the color of your skin or the language you speak it doesn't matter whether you are pious or impious indeed brothers and sisters whether you are young or old because death can come to any one of us at any time indeed we should not even imagine 
that having begun this day that we will reach the end of it nor we should imagine that if we begin the night that we will reach the end of it we should imagine that death and we should realize that death can come to us at any time at any moment and what an event death is brothers and sisters what a terrifying moment what an awesome spectacle when we reach our graves when the angels of the angels and the angel of death Malik al Mot, comes to take our soul how will our condition be then brothers and sisters will our soul come out of our body willingly happily as if death was a welcome friend that has been away too long as the Prophet sallallahu described the soul of the believer how it will come out from the body as if you can imagine the small drop of water the dew that comes on the leaves in the morning you just touch the leaf and that dew drop falls in your hand this is how the soul of the believer comes out or will it be that our soul will have to be ripped from our body tearing the muscles and the veins as the Prophet ﷺ described it like thorns like cotton that is on a, a, a stick of thorns you see how you will have to rip it this is how the soul of the wicked and the sinful person will be reluctant and if our soul is one that has clung to this world then surely our soul will wish to cling to our body if our soul was one that looked to the akhirah that looked forward to the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life to come then it will be willing to leave the body and brothers and sisters the grave is a place where we are all alone indeed the company there will be initially the two angels who will question us in the grave they will ask us and question us severely and what is it brothers and sisters that will bring light to our grave what is it that will bring space to our grave what is it that will bring the day of 50,000 years the day of judgment the day of standing the day of fear and the day of terror what is it that will make that day short what is it brothers and sisters that when we reach a bridge that is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword that is stretched over the hellfire what is it that will carry us swiftly across that bridge to the other side what is it brothers and sisters that will cause us to be recognized by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when we go towards a pond al kawthar the pond the hawd the pond in which is a drink that is cooler than snow and whiter than milk and sweeter than honey that if you drink of it you will never be thirsty again what will make us recognized by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so what are the things brothers and sisters that are going to give us relief on that day what is it that is going to cause us to enter into paradise except our deeds except our deeds it is our deeds that will be the cause for our graves to be full of light to be spacious to be as if it is a garden from paradise it is our deeds that will cause that long and terrible day to seem as if it is short it is our deeds that will carry us swiftly across the bridge that is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword it is the marks of making wudu of the ritual ablution 
that will cause us to be noticed and identified by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the banks of Al Kawthar, the pond. It is nothing except our deeds, brothers and sisters. It is nothing except our deeds. And through our deeds, the grace and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon us and that we enter into paradise. And the angels will say, enter to paradise because of what you used to do. Oh brothers and sisters, therefore we have to think and we have to ask ourselves, what is the greatest of all the deeds? What is the most important of all the deeds 